I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, solemnly swear that you will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of your ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. The energy, the faith, the devotion, which we bring to this endeavor, will light our country and all who serve it. And so, my fellow Americans, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Air Force number one, ladies and gentlemen, carrying the President of the United States with the seal on the side. Right into us now. There's Mrs. Kennedy, and the crowd yells, and the President of the United States. And I can see his suntan all the way from here. Beautiful break in the weather. Just a beautiful break in the weather. Clear blue sky and a warm sun. The president is up to the fence now, shaking hands with people. The President and his wife are right up on the fence. The press is standing up high, getting a lot of shots of this. He's uh, done as he has done in several places. He's broken away from his uh, planned uh, plan and uh, gone right up to the fence to shake hands with people. So we stopped and got out and looked at Air Force One. And it was pretty exciting. And then we went down to St. Paul Hospital. Checked in and got everything that you do when you do that, uh, when you have a baby and, and put, uh, she went to a room and everything was good. That motorcade will swing way around Head out for downtown Dallas, where thousands should already be on the street right now, awaiting for a view of the president and his wife. Dallas police out here in force today, doing a beautiful job of handling the crowd, along with a contingent of Texas Rangers. There were so many of his children that my aunt decided to figure a way of dealing with us, so she went and got some shelving paper. She went to get the shelving paper, brought back some uh, markers, and drew up a sign, please stop and shake our hands, JFK and LBJ in 64. And so after she laid all that out, then we stretched it out in front of us, there was 10 or 15 of us, and we waited uh, right on the curb. And then as the motorcade came by and we saw President Mrs. Kennedy looking at us, he was reading the sign. And so he beckoned to us to come over. So the motorcade stopped and we started moving towards the car. And I, being the oldest, I dropped the sign. I was at one end, I dropped it and, and ran right into the street over to shake his hand. And my brothers followed me and so did the cousins. And then they, they shoot us away. Thousands will be on hand for that motorcade now, which will be downtown Dallas, uh, down uh, Cedar Springs to Harwood, and on Harwood it'll turn on Maine, from which point it'll go all the way down to the courthouse area, which is the end of Maine. It'll turn on uh, Houston Street to Elm under the triple underpass, out to the mart where the president talks at uh, approximately one o'clock, which will also be carried live right here on most of these channels. And then we'll be back here again, of course, as we told you, at about 2.15 for the president's departure. I was asked to chaperone part of the choir because the nun did not want to walk those blocks there. So the students had practiced many, many times some of the favorite songs that they like, thought the president would enjoy. We walked down, we waited. His caravan was just creeping along and they were waving at us, we were waving, we were all so, so very happy to see the president. The police escort is now ahead of the presidential motorcade, just having now turned right hand uh, onto Main off of Harwood. And the crowd is surging forward to uh, close in somewhat on the leading cars. There's a big cheer going up as the uh, president gets further down. 
And now the ticker tape is beginning to flow from the window. He went by pretty fast, although there was quite a crowd. I, he, it took about a minute, I guess, to go by. And uh, we were just screaming and yelling and so excited. Then we got back in the buses to head back to Oak Cliff. And the bus was stopped in traffic. It wasn't moving. We couldn't understand what had happened. We thought maybe there'd been a traffic accident. There was a lot of traffic. And one of the girls had a transistor radio back, back in the day. That's the kind we had. And she turned it on to listen to some music. But there was no music. behind us uh, that looked like the motorcade but they didn't come to where we were they kept going and um, it seemed like we were near a police motorcycle and we heard a radio something about the president here is a bulletin from CBS News President Kennedy was shot as he drove from Dallas Airport to downtown Dallas Governor Connolly of Texas in the car with him was also shot it is reported that three bullets rang out. A Secret Service man has been, was heard to shout from the car, he's dead. Whether he referred to President Kennedy or not is not yet known. The president, cradled in the arms of his wife, Mrs. Kennedy, was carried to an ambulance and the car rushed to Parkland Hospital outside Dallas. The president was taken to an emergency room in the hospital. Other White House officials we're in doubt. Recounting again the details of this incident, three shots were heard to ring out as Kennedy and Governor Connolly and Mrs. Kennedy rode in the back seat of the open car. From the time the president came in, I did not have emotions. I was doing what I knew had to be done. The administrator was telling us what to do, and, and that's what we did. I didn't have emotions until I got home at 11 o'clock that night and stopped thinking about it. Then I became quite emotional. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. Vice President Lyndon Johnson <clears throat> has left the hospital. Uh, presumably, he will be taking the oath of office shortly and become uh, the 36th President of the United States. I just tell him to explain it. So I will say to He was not only my president, he was my commander in chief and I had a lot of admiration for him because he was doing things at that time that the nation needed, the needed healing. The day after the president was buried, my father died. 
and I always, it's, it's a very, very hard. As a free man, I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berlin. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. 100 years of delay have passed since President Lincoln freed the slaves, yet their heirs, their grandsons, are not fully free. Who among us would then be content with the counsels of patience and delay? What kind of a peace do I mean and what kind of a peace do we seek? I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace in all time. If a free society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Thank <laughs> you.